How are you guys doing? Just good? Great. You guys sound awesome singing. I'll tell you that for sure. And let me ask you guys something before I pray. Anyone here gone through any storms lately? Personally? In your life? Challenges? Things that you just are like, what in the world is going on? It happens. Um, and I'm not here to give you bad news, but they keep coming. You just don't go through one storm. And um, it, uh, it takes a lot to get through storms. But hopefully some of the stuff that I'm going to talk to you tonight about will help you make it through them but also help you in realizing that number one, you're not alone. And number two, there are plenty of people that you can help either avoid the storms that you've already gone through, that you might be able to walk through the storm with them, or they might just be able to avoid the storm altogether because of what you share and how you love on them and just appreciate what they have going. If you guys would just pray with me real quick. God, please remove me from this message. God, let the words coming from my mouth be yours. God, your son told us that there would be storms. That following him would come at a cost. And that by no means were we to expect everything to be smooth sailing once we said yes. Like those curveballs at us, bricks at us, in a lot of, in a lot of cases, just doesn't seem fair. But you've told us that with you, there is an opportunity, an opportunity to have life to the full. God, that's what we want. We continue to carry baggage, veer off course, and simply puts, puts, we put stones in our steps and stub our toes and God, I just ask that you would speak through me, that the people in this room would hear what you have to say. I ask a special prayer for the person sitting in this room right now that thinks they need to hear it the least. God, that that person with no problems at all. God, be present with us. Send down your Holy Spirit and uh, fill this place and bring us peace. Amen. All right, so I want to... Um, share a Bible verse with you real quick. And it's from Micah 6, 8. And if you're not familiar with it, I highly suggest getting familiar with it. It's an amazing verse that can help you and help others. It says, He has shown you, O mortal, that's us, we're the mortal people, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And the other the other night, I was at a at a meeting, um, a men's group meeting that I'm serving on on a walk to Emmaus. And one of the guys was giving his practice talk. So Emmaus and Chrysalis are very similar, and they have multiple talks by lay people and clergy. And this was a, a lay person, someone just mortal like me and you. Not that lay, not that clergy are immortal, but. Or more mortal, I think. And uh, and he said something that just resonated with me. And it was on this verse, but he said, in order to really live out this verse, there's something that we need to do. And that something is we need to anchor ourselves to God. We need to securely fasten ourselves to the word, to what he has for us, and what happens when storms come. So I want to play this video for you um, real quick, hopefully. Yes. You guys pay attention to this storm. attention to where the boats are going. It's 
It's not just a windy day. That is a massive storm. We cut out the sound because there were some bleeps from the guy that was videotaping it, as you can imagine. But anyway, that's fine. That's good. You can go there. Um, what did you guys notice about those boats? They weren't moving. They weren't moving. I think they were moving. But where were they moving? Same place. Same place. Why were they doing that? Why, why weren't they getting tossed out into the sea? Huh? Because of the waves? Maybe. Do you think they might have been anchored? <laughs> They're moving. They're just staying in the same place. They're moving like this. Huh? <laughs> were they moving out to sea? Yes. <laughs> were you watching the same video that we watched? I <laughs> mean, they were. They were still in the same spot, but they're going back and forth. They haven't lost their anchor. All right. So I'm going to ask a couple friends to come up in a minute. Nathan, this may help a little bit. Okay. Cool. You yep. stick with me. Um, so I'm gonna, I want to give you guys kind of a, a picture to think about real quick. Um, so I'm going to ask somebody to come up and be God. That would be, um, I think we picked uh, Henry to be God. <laughs> so you can just go where over there somewhere. It's fine. So if I'm anchoring myself to just imagine he's God, I know it's hard. <laughs> I know it's hard to just imagine that he's God. I'm still going to move, Nathan, like this and like this. I may even go all the way around him, but I'm still the same distance I am from God, right? Not that that's a bad distance to be. This is just an example. I'm still anchored to him, okay? Um, let's say... James, Coach James, Israel, Lily, where'd my other one go? Uh, it was William. You guys spread out. Now, how far am I going side to side, back and forth? Not very much, huh? You're pulling my pants down. Don't do that. We're going to eat your... Right? So, when I'm anchored to God, I'm moving far, right or left, or all the way around. All right? When I surround myself with people that are also focused on God, a small group leader, good friend, good good example of what it means to be a follower of Christ and another follower of Christ. My path is not going to move so much. And if it does, they're pulling me back on to that path. Thanks, guys. So, thanks. Thanks, God. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it, God. So when those storms come, we're a little bit more secure. Okay. What I imagine the anchors being your friends and those others that are that are around you, your small group leader, maybe your pastor, maybe your parents, whatever it might be, those are the people that are going to keep you from getting washed out to sea. Okay, from being so lost that it's it's impossible to come back. Any Matt, I know you have. Have you ever swum swam against the current? How hard is that? Quite difficult, he says. I like the answer. So if you're swept out to sea, how long is it going to take you by yourself to get back? A good, good bit? Yeah, probably. So when those storms come, if we have support so that we don't get washed out to sea, so that we don't go down the wrong path, so we don't go do what 
the people that are not surrounding us do, we're in a lot better shape. When we have things like the right people, the word of God, Bible study and support, it keeps us on, on course. And really, if you think about it, Jesus is the model for that, right? I know Jesus is the right answer for every question in church and youth group, right? But who's the best model of what it means to walk, walk humbly, act justly, and love mercy? Jesus, right? So I want to read a um, another passage for you, and it's in um, Matthew. It's Matthew four eleven. I'm in Micah, so that won't work. So four eleven. Let me, let me preface this real quick. So all day, every day, and, and my small group has heard me say this often, and you, you guys, some of you guys in high school have heard me say this because you came up too, but we're hit all day long by things, right? You need this car to be successful, or you need this size house, or you need these shoes to run fast or jump high, or you need this tennis racket to be a professional tennis player, or whatever the case may be, right? Um, you need this set of clothes in order to be in the in crowd or whatever that is. We're tempted every single day by worldly things. Because as we said and we agreed on, Jesus is the example, right? So in Matthew 4.11, it says, Then the devil, sorry, is it 4.11 or 4.1? I can't see. 4.1, sorry. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So if you're going to be tempted, the devil's probably the stud at tempting. I mean, it's not going to be your friend. It's the devil. He's going up against the, the king tempter. And after, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I wonder why. And the tempter came and said to him, If you're the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He kind of slapped him in the face. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the, on the pinnacle of the temple, very top, and said to him, If you're the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to the devil, and it, is, and it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So he slapped him in the face again, and the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I'll give you if you will fall down and worship. All of it. Give you all the kingdoms of the world, all their glory, all their riches, if you'll just bow down and worship. And Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. We're bombarded all day, every day with things that are meant or told to us to be good, but they are actually pushing us off course, they're pushing us from side to side, they're putting us in a ditch. They're, they're offering things that are only able to be found in God, which is full life. The thing that you and I need to remember and understand and believe is that we make mistakes. Anyone in here perfect? No? Good. At least we start, we're starting at the right point. We all make mistakes. 
But when we make mistakes, it means we're trying. And Jesus loves us so much. And God loves us so much. And I want to read you one more verse. I think we even have a slide for it. It comes from Romans 5, 8. For while we were still weak, still sinners, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Let me read this version real quick. But God demonstrated his love, his own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we're still doing wrong, when we were still not following, making mistakes, going the wrong direction, he was still willing to take on that. The probably, and it's been written many times, the most horrific death recorded in history. That he would take beatings, get spit in the face, slapped, kicked, punched, whipped until his skin was falling off his back, a crown of thorns on his head. For me, for you, while we were still sinners, we didn't have to be good for him to die for. We just had to be human. There's only one perfect person that ever walked this earth. And it's not you and it's not me. We already agreed on that. It was Jesus. And when we think about, when you sit there, if you, you just sit there for a second, just think of the death that I just kind of explained in very limited detail. That, that was for you. That sacrifice was so that you could live fully in Christ, freely in Christ. So I have a question, another question for you, but you don't have to answer it. Do you think you can walk with Christ? Are you willing to walk with Christ? My prayer for you, that has been for you, but even stronger this week, has been that at some point, be it today, be it tomorrow, or somewhere down the road, that you say yes. I believe that even though I'm a sinner, Christ died. I want to follow that. And I want to have that freedom to live a full life. Not tied down to the worldly things that are just constant. More, 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 more. I mean, if you think about, can we go to the next slide real quick? I was saying mistakes are, are, are proof that you're actually trying. If you're not making any mistakes, you're not trying. You're just not trying. Go to the next slide, please. I believe if we say these words, I can and I will, and the next one, just say yes. If you say yes, you want to follow Jesus, I believe that each of you have somebody in this room, somebody on the outside, you have Justin, you have small group leaders, you have me that will walk with you in that journey. That will help to be one of those one of those ropes to hold you on the course, to keep you from floating out to sea. 
we have a lot of things that are bombarding us. If you go to the next slide, you'll see some of that. That one. You see greed, lust, envy, pride, lying, anger. Anyone know what sloth means? Lazy, lazy. Anyone ever seen a sloth move? How fast do they move? It's almost like they're not even moving. But when we're lazy, when we're not doing things for God, for others, to better our community, to better the people that we're around, we're, we're being sloths. I'm not sure what the next slide is because I went off course because I always do. What's the next? What was the verse? Was that the Philippians? Yes. Yes. All right. So, does everyone in here have a Bible? Or a Bible app? Obviously, a Bible app. I'm going to tell you something. Justin and I talked about this multiple times. But this, this Bible has been written in there's pages, there's underlines, there's sticky notes from people. That one's from my daughter. There's one from my wife in here. There's little little notes about prayers that I have, sticky notes on what I wanted to remember about that. And you can write, I, I have nothing against online Bibles. But I'll tell you what, having, having a book, the book, and having your thoughts and your notes and what you were thinking about when you read something, is something that I highly recommend to each of you. And if any of you don't have a physical Bible, I'd be more than happy to get you one. But as I was flunk going through this, I came across this piece of paper. And on it, it says, how many words can we take out of this one, one verse and discuss? And it was just an idea, just a thought, hey, we can take each of these words and just do talks on each of these words because they're amazing. But then I then I was thinking, what do these words actually relate to, all of them? And so I'm gonna read this short piece and I want you guys to kind of close your eyes and I'll read it to you, I'll go slow. But I want you to think about some of the words that pop out for you, okay? And as you're doing that, I want you to think about who you know or someone that you can relate these words to. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equally with God. Did not count equally with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. The name that is above every name in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to 
the glory of God the Father. You guys can open your eyes if they're not already. But a couple of the words that popped out for me, I'll go over these after I ask you. What were some of the words that, that you that kind of popped out for you that hit you? All at once or individually, I don't care. Love. Love. Ambition. Ambition. Confess. Confess. Selfish. Selfish. Joy. Joy. Any others? Okay. I like those. I'm going to tell you my list. Encouragement. Um, and I looked up some definitions for you just because words are difficult sometimes, aren't they? So encouragement is the action of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. Support, confidence, confidence, or hope. Comfort. The easing or alleviation of a person's feelings of grief or distress. Love, an intense feeling of affection. Spirit. And there are a lot of them, a lot of definitions for this. So supernatural being or essence, such as the Holy Spirit, an animating or vital principle held to give life to physical organisms. Spirit, an animating or vital principle to give life to physical organisms. Affection. readily shows fondness or tenderness. Sympathy, showing feelings of sorrow for someone else's misfortune. Joy, feeling great pleasure and happiness. What do we always say about defining words? You can't define it with the word in the definition, right? So what that is telling us, joy, feeling of great pleasure and happiness, that happiness and joy are two different things. Happiness is fleeing. It's here and gone, here and gone. Joy is long-term. Selfless, concerned more with the needs and wishes of others than with, it, with one's own. Humility, Freedom from pride or arrogance. Others first, treating someone as being more important than anything, anyone else. And I also picked out servant. And the definition there is a devoted and helpful follower or supporter. When you hear that list, what do you think of? You hear that list of words just taken out of one small little portion of one small chapter in the, in the Bible. Hopefully you think about Jesus. He's all these things. He humbled himself. He became a servant. He loved. He was joy. He was sympathy. Compassion. And if we could emulate, think about those words again. I'm going to say them not without the definition. Encouragement, comfort, love, spirit, affection, sympathy, joy, selfless, humility, others first, and serving. I would venture to say that if we could emulate just half of those words, third of those words on a daily basis, imagine how different our school would be, our church would be, our family would be, our community, 
third of those books, maybe shoot for a half. So if we could be encouragers of others, if we could comfort others, if we could just help others to get on the right path, pull others back that were on the right path that are not here. Because that's really what it's all about. It's really all about being in community, being able to look at each other, to hold each other accountable, to guide each other, to ask questions of each other, to share the storms that you're going through, gone through, so that maybe you might find out from somebody else what storms are around the corner that you can prepare for and or avoid. Because although it feels like when we're in a storm that it's only happening to us and I'm the only person that it's ever happened to, that's a lie. And there are people that are probably sitting right next to you that have gone through the same storm and most likely if they haven't gone through it, they're either going through it or they're gonna go through it. And if you share the storms that you made it through or going through, you're gonna build a community people that are making it through storms over and over and over again because they're anchored to God and because they have those other ties that are holding them closer to what his word says. 